Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem array of objects to matrix. So this is definitely a difficult problem. Basically, we are given some object that could be highly nested and we want to sort of flatten it. This is kind of analogous to taking like a document in a document like database and converting it to SQL or like a relational database or like in the form of a table. And we know tables are, of course, two dimensional and the word matrix itself by definition is two dimensional. So there is some practicality to this problem. I will mention, though, that it's not like a one to one mapping. Like we'll first take a look at some of the examples on what exactly we're trying to do. So basically every single key value is going to be a value in the first row. So we want to take every single key value in any of the objects. In this case, we have a list of two objects and there's only two keys, A and B. And all of those are gonna go in the first row and they need to be sorted as well. That should be pretty easy for us if we can find all of the keys. And the following rows of the output, the next one is basically gonna be all of the values in the first object. The next row is gonna be all of the values in the second object and they need to be ordered by the key. So here we can see A maps to two. So two is gonna be in the first position even though it's in the second position in the object. In the second object, A maps to four, so it's gonna be here. Now you might be thinking, what if not every key is in every single object in this array? Well, thankfully they do have some examples for that. This second example is an interesting one. All of the keys are A, B, C, and D, so we add those to the first row, even though some of the keys show up in the first object, some of them show up in the second. In the first object, A maps to one, B maps to two, but C and D don't show up, so we put an empty string in the output for that. Now, this is kind of the first hint that it's not reversible. What we're doing here, if we get like the two dimensional matrix, we can't reverse this back to the object because how do we distinguish between whether in the first object, C did not appear at all, therefore there's an empty string, or maybe C actually did appear in the first object, but it just happened to map to an empty string. See, we can't distinguish that. So therefore this operation that we're doing here is not really reversible. And there are other reasons for that as well that I won't really spend too much time on. But the second example shows us on the nested scenario where A doesn't map to a value. It's not a primitive. It's actually another object. And of course, objects have keys. So what would we do? Would we just consider B and C as keys in the first row? Not quite, because that doesn't give us all of the information. We know that we started with an A key and then we took a second key B. So therefore we put a period in between them. And similarly over here, and we could you know, be nested even further. There could be B maps to another object. Then we'd have to put a period behind B and then add like the following key as well. So that kind of gives you a hint that this problem is going to possibly be solved with recursion. And that's how I'm going to solve it. The fourth example is also interesting because they not only tell us that we could be given an array of objects, we could also be given an array of arrays. Arrays are kind of like objects. It's just the difference is that the key is going to be the index in this case. So this array, basically think of this as being rewritten like this on the right hand side, where instead of being an array, it's actually this. It's an object where the key just happens to be zero and it maps to this object. So these are sort of equivalent here. This one is a bit more representative and it makes it more obvious that we're going to be starting with the zero here. And of course we could have others as well. We could have an array of multiple and therefore we would go to one and it maps to some object and then maybe two maps to some object. So basically I'm spending time on understanding the problem before we get into solving it because you really want to have a good understanding of the edge cases here. So there's definitely a lot of ways to solve this problem. A sort of naive approach that you might first try is just try to map every key to a list of its values. So you'd create an object and you would try mapping every key, for example, 0.b to a list of all of the values that show up in the object. But if you do do it this way, you would have to, for every object, keep track of like, Maybe in the first object, it maps to a one. In the second object, it maps to nothing. Therefore, we would have to explicitly add this and that can get kind of tricky especially if we don't know beforehand what all of the keys happen to be. If you don't believe me, you can try it this way. I won't go super in depth on why this is gonna be kind of tricky, but this is sort of a hint that it's gonna be useful for us to have all of the keys beforehand. So I'm going to actually create a helper function to do that. We're going to get all of the keys from an object. 
and we're going to be doing this recursively. Given some object, we want to basically get all the keys. So what should we first do? Go through the list of keys that are available to us in that object. And we also know it actually could be an array. And it, this will actually work in that case as well. We use the in operator, which gives us all of the keys. If it's an array, it will do pretty much what we want it to. It'll start at zero, then go to one, et cetera, et cetera. But basically there are going to be two cases here, either object using this key happens to be an actual object. This, is, this will be the recursive case. The else case is if it's not an object, in which case we know we found a key and we want to add it to all the keys available. And the easiest way I'm going to do that is just by creating sort of a global key set out here, which is going to be basically a hash set in JavaScript so that we don't have duplicates. And then in the else case, what I'm going to say is in the key set, just add the current key that we're looking at. So that's simple enough. But remember, this could be recursive. As we keep going down that chain of keys, we want to accumulate all of the keys we have, aka we want the path of all of the keys. So we're going to have a second variable here. And initially, when we call our get keys like this, passing in the parameter that's given to us, the array, and passing in an empty string, that's what we're going to start with, of course, as the path. So then when we add to the key set, we actually don't want to just add the current key. We want to add the new current path that we're at, which is I'm going to say like this. And at first you might just think we'll take the existing path, add a period and then add the current key. That's not bad, but on the first iteration of the get keys function, before we do any recursion, path is going to be empty. We don't want a preceding period before the current key. So we kind of have to know, is this empty or is it not? The way I like to do this is like with the ternary operator, if this is empty, then therefore we just want the current key. If it's not empty, then we want to do what we previously had. And instead of using the addition operator, I'm going to write it like this, where the path is going to be proceeding. Then we're going to have a period in between, and then we're going to have the current key variable, and that will be the new path. And then instead of adding the key, we want to add the new path down here. Now the recursive case, first of all, we have to know that this is an object. How do we know if it's an object? Well, we can say type of, but I'm actually going to create a helper function for that below for is object because we know null also uh, evaluates to an object. And when we have null, we definitely don't want to execute the recursive case. We want to execute this case. So let's, given some object, be able to determine if it's null or not. So if, and actually we can just return this if object or object is not equal to null and the type of this object is equal to the string object. Then we'll know if this is an object. And if it is, we want to do the actual recursive case, which we can call get keys. We're going to pass in this uh, new object. And then we want to update the path. Well, we already have the new path, so we can just pass that in. And remember, the get keys, we don't care about the return value. We don't even need to return anything here because it's updating the key set, which is not necessarily global, but it's outside of the scope of this function. So we do have access to it, the shared instance. So I think this get keys is pretty much complete. But if I call get keys on the array, it's actually going to be a problem because remember, we're given an array of objects like this. So the first key iterating through this array is going to end up being zero, but we don't care about that. We care about the actual keys in the objects themselves, like a one maps there. If I call get keys on this array, we're going to end up with a preceding zero for all of these. We're going to end up with a preceding one for all of the keys in here. We're going to end up with something like this. That's a problem. And I know that because that's what I tried initially. So to fix it, we actually want to go through every object in the array. And actually we do that with the of operator. That's always confusing for me. And for every object, then we want to call get keys. And it's okay if we end up with duplicates because our key set will remove all of the duplicates. But after we have generated that, we do want to convert it to a list because we do need to sort it. So in JavaScript, it's pretty easy to do that. You don't just call the array constructor though, that would be too easy. We call array from passing in the key set. So this gives us an array. Then we want to sort that array like this, and then we can assign that to our keys. And there we go. So all we've done so far is basically built the first row. So I'm going to create our result, which we know is going to be a matrix. So it's going to be an array where the first row is the keys. 
So then of course, the only thing left for us to do is actually get the values for the remaining rows. And for that, we're going to actually write a second helper function, which is going to be get values. And similar to the first one, it's going to take an object and it's going to take a path and we're going to recursively find every single value in each object. Now, before I actually implement this, I'm gonna show you, it's gonna be called similarly to the get keys over here. We're going to go through every object in the array and we could naively just get every value and put it into an array. But we know that, remember, these values also have to be in the same relative order as the keys. So the easiest way that I know to do that is to do it in two steps. So we're gonna have this creating a map key to value. So we're gonna get every single value and put it in this object, mapping each key to the value. Now, the order of these might not be exactly what we're looking for. And after we've done that, we're gonna go through every key in our list of keys because those are the ones that are actually sorted in order up here. And then for every single key, even the ones that not didn't necessarily have a value in this current object, we're going to push something to the current row that we're gonna be building. So let's declare that up here. And we're going to check if else, like basically if this key is in the key to value map, then we're going to say row push whatever the value happened to be. And we can get that from the map itself like this. Otherwise, we know that the default thing that we want to push is an empty string. And the reason this works is because remember, even though we're doing this recursively, we're pretty much guaranteed in any object, a single key can only map to one value. You might think, well, a key can map to an array, but remember, we're not just talking about a single key. We are joining the keys recursively with like a period in between them. So if a value was in an array, we'd say, well, that key is gonna be key dot zero or maybe key dot one, key dot two. So each key will uniquely map to a single value in any single object. And of course, after we build a row, we can push it to the result. So uh, result dot push that row. Now the only thing left to do here is before we start doing all of this, we expect the key to value map to actually be populated. And that's what get values is going to do. We're gonna pass in an object. We're gonna pass in the path. And the third parameter we're gonna pass in is key to value because this is not necessarily accessible from the function that we've defined over here. If we had defined key to value up here, like we did with key set, then it would have been accessible. The reason I'm doing it this way is we basically want to initialize an empty key to value map for every single object in that array. And this is kind of an easy way to do that. So now get to values, let's fill it out. And remember the third parameter is gonna be key to value. And this is gonna be similar to the above function where we're going to go through every key in the object. We're gonna declare the new path similarly because we do care about the path. That's gonna tell us what the key is. So if the key is null, or if the current path is null, then it's just gonna be the key. Otherwise, I'm just gonna copy and paste over here. And similarly, if this is an object, then we do the recursive case. So we wanna check if the current key maps to an actual object or if it maps to a primitive. If it's a primitive, that's gonna be the base case for us where we say now key to value, the current key, which is not just the key, it's gonna be the path, the entire path, the new path, maps to this object, which we know now is a primitive. Otherwise, we call get values recursively, passing in the current object, passing in the new path and passing in the key to value object, which isn't really gonna change. We're just passing that in because we need this uh, to pass it in to actually access that. So since we already pretty much called this get values method up above and did everything correctly, I think the only thing left for us now to do is actually return the result. And I'm just gonna do that up here. You can see, obviously I'm doing that before the function declarations down here. That's perfectly fine because remember, because of hoisting, we can still uh, call these functions because they're declared with the function keyword. And of course I did have a bug uh, path over here. Remember when we call it the first time, we're just passing in an empty string because that's what the path is. Okay, unfortunately I had another bug. My ternary operators were in reverse. If the path is not null, then we want to actually put the path as the prefix. 
But if it is null, then we just want to take the key. So I think I did this with the Python ordering because I'm used to doing Halil code problems in Python. So let me just reverse the order of these. Sorry if that was confusing. And then I'm just going to copy and paste this one and move it up above. And speaking of Python, unfortunately, I use the in keyword over here when we're going through an array of values, which that, that's what this is, an array of objects, I guess we want to use of. If we use in, it'll give us the index or the key. And that's why we're using it when we're iterating through objects and we actually want the key. But in this case, we don't want the key, we want the actual object. And we probably want to make that same adjustment over here because keys is an array and we want every uh, value in that array. You can probably tell I don't really love the way that we iterate through things in JavaScript. But now let's run this to make sure that it works. And as you can see, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you soon.